Lovely. Lovely. Cheers. Bye. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. Adult trauma call, eight minutes. I've got an unconscious gentleman. He has severe traumatic brain injury. King's College Hospital, London. I think something hurt. One of the busiest A&E departments in the country. They're a bit busy right now. Yeah, you know, 15 minutes, 30 yeah. minutes. King's is extreme, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> a place where love, life and death... <laughs> unfold every single day. Fall from a tree. It's probably absolutely trolleyed. I'm very drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep thinking I'm not going to cope. All the patients you're about to see were treated in one department <gasps> in just one 24-hour period. Kavina. Everyone should walk through an emergency room at least once in their life because it makes you realise what your priorities are. It's not the rush, rush, rush and the money, money, money. It's the people you love and the fact that one minute they might be there and one minute they might be gone. Come on, to be ready, brace, and roll. We can have a bucket for him to be sick in as well. Ready, brace, roll. The resus room is central to all emergency departments. It's where the most seriously ill patients are treated. Hello, Kings. What are you scared of? My patients becoming ill or more ill or dying. Oh. You know, if a patient does die, you just go through it in your head. You know, have I done the right thing? Have I done something wrong? It's terrifying. Adult trauma call in 15 minutes. Right, this is Tom. Yeah. 77 year old man who is up a ladder right. over the stairs in his house painting. Yeah. He fell off the ladder head first, right down. It looks about okay, 10 so, feet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Knocked unconscious. Okay. For, we were on team quite quick, so probably maximum three minutes. Right. He then okay. came to confuse, grab it out. Malcolm is the lead trauma consultant on duty. Today, he's responsible for every major trauma case that arrives. So we're happy with Airway? Airway is painting to be central. Does he feel sick at all? <laughs> Um, he was up a ladder over a stairwell painting and was falling approximately 10 foot onto his head. 77-year-old Tom Gibbs is one of 14 people who will arrive in recess today. Things any? Yep. All with just a few minutes warning. Yep. OK, lovely. Thanks very much, bro. Code red. From HEMS. HEMS red phone, five minutes. Sorry. HEMS have just done um, a pre-alert for right. code red blood, but they've given right. us no patient yeah. details, so right. we're just getting code red blood now and waiting for the phone to go again yeah. to, to then start the okay. trauma call. So Do we know anything about the trauma nothing. call as well? Nothing. Let me just find the control desk first of all, because I, I want to know more about yeah, yeah. this. Yeah, no, and basically, we're getting, four, we're getting six of blood up here now. Yeah. As as soon as we get them. Wonderful. I've got a HEMS call, code red, coming in. Yeah, hi, it's Malcolm Tunnicliffe, the trauma consultant at King's College Hospital here. I've had a call saying HEMS have declared a code red. They're still on scene. Are you able to give me any more info at the moment? OK. Lovely. That, that's fine. That's, that's really helpful. Thank you very much. Excuse me. HEMS, or helicopter emergency medics, handle only the most serious cases. HEMS are just loading this patient now. There's a guy who's been hit by a bus. He's sick. <laughs> All right. 
if we just pre-alert theatres that we may, if they could keep a theatre free now, we've got quite a juicy one coming in in a minute. Fear of making a mistake makes you not cut corners. Hello, King's College Hospital. Hello, it's Malcolm Sonnicke for Trauma Consultant here. Hi. Bankers, lawyers, so on. Yeah, of course they've got an important job to do. But I tell you what, I'd, I'd rather face the fear of losing a million pounds on the stock exchange yeah. than of a patient of mine committing any harm. That's pressure. Okay, can we put a trauma call out now? There's six minutes away, but put it out for now. He's got chest, abdo and pelvic injuries. He's been entrapped by the bus. Is it him? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay, Katie, can I have two units of blood run through now, please? You splash paint all up, Jane City. What? You had the paintbrush in your hand. When you fell, it was all on the floor when you fell onto the paintbrush. Do the other damage. No, no, damage, no. Only, to only when you tried to get up and hold on a radiator, yeah. there was blood all down the radiator, because she was absolutely covered in it. All on the floor where it was pouring out your nose, out your mouth. You know who we are, don't you? Hello, Phil. Sorry? He didn't hear you. Do you know who we are, I said? Do I know who you are? Yeah. Do I know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I don't know what you're up with, Mitch. Sorry? So we don't know what you're up with, Mitch. Oh, he's been in the middle. He's done all the awkward bits, he said. Yeah. <laughs> Are you hungry? You're hungry? Pims have requested code red blood. All we know is the patient's extremely sick. They've been run over by a bus. Juicy, juicy, juicy one. Hey? Juicy one, come here. The big guy been run over by a bus, actually run over. Blood's being teed. I'm going to do number one, Jackie, but I'd like the surgical consultant as well, if possible. The trauma team have five minutes to prepare for the arrival of a man run over by a bus. Yeah, it's quite a sick, sick guy coming in. Jackie, what we'll probably need as well, I would guess he's been thoracostomized. So if we get 32, two 32 French chest drains straight in, if possible, as well after your initial assessment, yeah? One either okay. side. Hi, switchboard. We need to speak to Mr. H I need to speak to Mr. Halal, the surgical consultant on call. We had one guy that was riding his motorbike. I remember this is the first big horrid trauma to call that came in when I was a junior nurse. It was a guy on a motorbike. He was riding it too fast, and he came off his bike and he was thrown quite far, and he hit. The, you know the divider down the middle of the road it used to be like giant corrugated iron, like a bendy piece of metal. The impact. Basically, he amputated his leg from just above the knee, clean off, no leathers on. And he just hosed out over the floor and arrested in the road from ma massive hemorrhage. And he was just sick for ages and ages and ages, but he'd lost so much blood that he, he died. And I remember having to put him in the body bag and his leg went in the bag separately. And I, that was my first kind of realisation of Tra you know, major trauma. Helena, we've got a young man coming in who has been run over by a bus and entrapped. He is intubated and ventilated. He has chest, abdominal, and pelvic injuries and is cardiovascularly unstable. Thanks. Right, Malcolm. Yeah. I've left him a voicemail. So it's Savas who's on. So Helena's just going to try and right. go there. We just speak to that. Jean Luc will be on the end of that. Just so we can have an extension for him and get hold of him. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hang on a sec. Is everyone no, here for the team? The yes, thank you, Leanne. Yes, yeah. thanks. Bye. Okay. Someone else is doing that, yeah? Yeah. Where did Sharon go?
Here we go. Here we go. Straight in here, please. Sharon, are you scrubbing? Okay, please, please, please. Me too. Are you scrubbing? Right, we'll have to keep yeah. enough control in. Okay, blood on the left arm, okay? Peter. Cross, ready. Okay, far away. Guys, I don't want to listen. This guy is approximately 30 years of age. He was hit by a bus going approximately 15 miles an hour. It pulled by the windscreen and then was trapped, folded in half, under the front of the bus. GCS 13 at sea, losing one for eyes, one for voice, moving all four limbs. Injuries, he's got head injuries by, uh, with a right periorbital hematoma. He's got a right side flail chest with uh, surgical emphysema. Definite pelvis, degloving of the left anterior shin and foot, and an abrasion to the right shin. He's had a rapid sequence induction with a pank time of 14.45, had two of morphine, two of midazolam. He has had 50 of ketamine. Immediate needs, blood, more IV access, um, and possibly surgical control of breathing. Lovely, thank you very much. Okay, Peter, happy with the tube? No, not yet. I've got no. Okay, Jackie, talk to me. Right, heart rate is 154. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Peter? Happy? Okay. You just take that on and then I'll um, relieve you. Everything Malcolm does in the next 15 minutes will be solely to keep the patient alive so he can be scanned and have his injuries assessed. Okay, outside that door, there's some folding screens. Can you just got minimum put one more across them doors? So okay, can't we'll see put, in. put tubes in both sides. Yeah. Gareth, yeah. just put your finger in there, just see if he's up that right, side. I'm not getting well. blood pressure. Yeah. Here, We've got a drain coming. Um, some things are irreparable. Some, you know, some people come in and through the door and, you know, we, we try. Pete, Ramilla, we just fast game, just see if you can compartmentalise where the bleeding is. If, it's, if there's nothing in his belly, we'll go to angio. If not, we'll go to theatre if there's a lot of blood in his belly. I think it makes you see how fragile life is, definitely. One minute you're walking down the street or you're going around Sainsbury's with your trolley, next minute you're in the back of an ambulance. It can happen just like that. Squeeze that. And can I have another 32 French drain? Thank you. You could connect. Is there... And it's cut. Just cut. Yeah, thank you. And another underwater seal, please. Do you want it now? Do you want me to give it? Yeah. Got that better, Lee. Can you pass me that other tube in the Right. Malcolm, shove that in. Oh, you got his tubes in. Got the acid. Yeah. Can I have a pair of scissors? Then I've got scissors. OK. Left drain is swinging there. Can we just ring 5620? CT should be ready. And Angio. It's got no obvious blood in his belly. So we'd like to go up head to toe with possible Angio, OK? OK, good. Can you put a freeway tap yeah, on please. that line? Guys, guys. We're happy he's got a tube in. We're happy both drains are swinging. OK, we've got access, we've got blood. OK, what I would like to do ASAP is go up to Angio, OK? Don't squirt that in my face, please. <laughs> You've done your code red business? Yeah. So, yeah, we haven't got any bloods off him, have you? Yeah, he's got some blood code red. He's dropped his blood pressure. Yeah, I know he has. Yeah, go. What do you think he's? Go. You coming with us? Yeah. For two units. What's that? <laughs> Sounds like you were saying see you later then. There like, should be no sharps in there. Come on, Jack. Oh, we're just going to go through this way. Uh, well, we're going to start with looking at CT first. Got it. Sorry. Another housekeeper, Sabrina, I'm going to go along with the bucket, Dave. Yeah, just keep squeezing the blood, he's going to need all of it. I can't. Anyone bleed surgeons? No, thank you. Yeah, there was blood on the floor on that bin wall. Need emptying, please. Sharon, the FFP's gone up to first floor Lovely. CT. They're sending another two units when it's defrosted. Okay. What's that on my back? Turn around, darling. Oh, I don't know. You look like you've been run over. Oh, no, I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing new there, though. Yeah, I'm... He's got a nasty fractured pelvis. It just... <sighs> gone. Yeah. Which is good. Is that 20 minutes? Yeah, not even that, was it? Still waiting for all your things to come out. 
still waiting for all the x-rays of things to come back, what you had done. It's been two hours since Tom Gibbs fell from a ladder while decorating his daughter's home. Very busy in here. He's very busy in here. After he retired, he should drive me crackers because he just didn't know what to do with himself during the day. We used to do the decorating between us. <laughs> if, I, if I hadn't done it first. <laughs> it's painting, he doesn't like painting. He's not very good with painting. And that's what he was doing when he fell down the stairs. We had to stop and start with you bringing you here. Was it three times? Yeah, three times. We had to stop the ambulance in the road for them to come and see to you. Because you, you were sick and they turned you over and you wanted to get up and they said, no, you can't. If you hadn't have been tied up like this, he'd have sat up like he did. I mean, we had, we had to fight to keep you on the floor in James. You wanted to keep getting up. I held you down. Got my own back on you. <laughs> you should let me get up. No. I'm not very good with heights, so we arranged for him to come over that day and to help me to paint up the stairwell. And fortunately, he didn't have the ladder completely positioned on the stairs properly. And I went to say to him, don't move. And as he turned around to look at me, the ladder spun, wedged across the stairs and um, threw that over the top. And down he went, head first. Completely silent, not a sound came from him. Um, and he hit the bottom and that was it. He just completely knocked out for about three minutes. Um, and I thought he was dead on his, uh, hmm. yeah. I thought he was dead actually, he hit the floor and he just didn't move. Right. What's up? What's hurting? My ribs. Hey? My ribs. Your ribs? Yeah, I think they might be cracked, Dad. Is that the first time you've had to think about it? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Mm. Dads are not supposed to fall down the stairs or have accidents or ever die. They're supposed to be there for you forever. That's, that's the way it should be. And we know that the life cycle says, you know, obviously your parents are going to go at some time. But we're not ready for that. We don't want to think about that. We just think they're going to be there forever. Tom, what this scan shows that where you've hit your head, you have a tiny bleed just inside the skull. He'll be staying in for the next 24 hours because you need to... You've got to stay in... Yeah, you've got to stay in for the next 24 hours just to make sure that you're OK. We like fussing. <laughs> they like, like people to practice on. Yeah. Look, you mucked up all their things you have bleeding all over them. King's ED. Guys, guys, absolutely brilliant effort, okay? Really, really well done. Okay, we know what his source of hemorrhage is now. It's really good. Which is? What is it? This is pelvis, is the, the bony injury. Scans reveal the man run over by a bus has suffered massive internal bleeding. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. In the short time he's been at King's, he's had his entire blood volume replaced. Oh, that's his flower segment. Oh. When someone does die on your watch, how do you deal with that? Do you know, it varies. When a patient has been in hospital for a while, you can prepare the family that the worst is going to happen. But the vast majority of people we see who die, it's completely unexpected. But one thing I think you have to be in every case, you have to be brutally honest when speaking to relatives once you know who they are. Thank you. Bye. You've got to say to them, your husband, your wife, your child, your mother is dead. Adult red phone in six 
minutes. That's had our red phone in six minutes. Jackie, if I give you some money, you wouldn't give me a sandwich, would you? If you're... I'll get you one of this. Do you mind? Oh, that's good, eh? Just an egg one or something. Hello, Johnny, and me. We're having absolutely fun and games with trauma. I'll fill you in a little while, bye. We need to give him some IV abs, Mal, because he's got a really nasty compound D gloving on that side. Yeah, OK, OK. Should we wrap this up with something then? In fact, can we, put a, can we put a thing on it not to be removed until reviewed by Ortho Consultant? Right, let's get, strip him off and sort him out. Hello, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way, it's sort of good you've gone to your mum and dad's because I had fun and games with trauma and I won't be leaving for another hour. We've just had a 30-year-old guy brought in by Hems about an hour ago. Been hit by a bus in Elephant and Castle, folded double, conscious while he was folded double, extricated. If I say to you his pelvis is like a jigsaw puzzle, you can imagine what it's like. The next arrival in Resus is a cyclist. That means we're getting to number four. He was found alone and unconscious in the road. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go. I'll give you a bell in a little while, OK? All right, bye. OK, then, guys, let's have a listen to Roger. OK, this is a 40-year-old male, mechanism injury, fell from bike, apparently isolated head injury, combative, moving all four limbs, with a blood sugar of 5.2. OK, thank you. OK, can I have a listen? Helen, can you have a gentle feel of his pelvis and look at his scrotum and external meatus as well? Thank you, Noah. I haven't bloody eaten all day. Oh, hello, my name's Ed. I'm one of the nurses at King's College Hospital at Accident Emergency Department. Um, I've had a patient brought in after a bike accident. We found this number in his mobile telephone, um, and I was wondering whether you could give me some details of his next of kin. He's got no significant injury to his brain, but he's got very complex fractures to his face. He's got collapsed lungs both sides, which have been treated. Staff are also beginning to piece together the identity of the man run over by a bus. His name is Theodore. He's got quite honestly the worst pelvic fracture I've ever, ever seen. It is in bits. So he's reasonably stable at present, but still life-threatening, and he'll be life-threatening for days. Um, but we've done everything we can for him. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 he's not going to be talking to him. No, 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 he's not going to be talking to him. So just to keep you... Yeah. Does he have any relatives, do you know? We're just in the process of finding okay. out. He's a student on the School of Economics. Right. Um, I'm doing checks at the moment with them sure. to see if uh, we've got next kin details and uh, address for him. Where's he from? He's got an unusual... He's Greek. He's Greek. Okay. Yeah, it's Green National. He's got a Greek ID card and Greek driver's license with him. OK. And how old do we reckon he is? Uh, 19 December, they've rested 33. OK, that's brilliant. Super. Right. Thank you very much. Mm. Theodore's family are 1,500 miles away in Greece. My mother called me and told me the, the bad news. I asked her uh, if he's going to live, and she responded to me at the moment, yes, he's alive. But I didn't like that word at the moment. So I knew that it was a very, uh, very serious accident. Theodore is the most important person in my life. He's not just my, my brother, he's uh, my buddy. And uh, my friend, first of all, I was worried that maybe I couldn't see him alive. And but. I just want to avoid that thought. That's why I keep telling to myself all over that flight, three hours, that uh, he's going to be okay. I didn't want to, to think that I will stop to have a brother. I didn't want to think that. Likes to be known as William. Or yeah, Bill. Yeah, or Will. Will? Yeah. Hello. Four hours after falling from his bike, William has yet to wake up fully. Mm. You squeeze my hand for me. Squeeze it tight. Squeeze it tight. Okay. Do you know what day it is, Will? It's, um... it's 
Half past 12. OK. Do you know where you are at the moment? Will? Do you know where you are at the moment? Yeah, where are you? Tell me. What place is this? All right, darling. Don't worry. He was extubated quite a while ago. Yeah. And they were making his GCS 13, but he's not obeying commands at all now. Uh -huh. Won't squeeze my hand, stick out his tongue, nothing like, nothing like that. Not very good. No. Let's have a look, shall we? Thank you very much. Kevin's Paul, I'm one of the uh, consultants here. All right. Hi. I'll just have a examine him. Uh, may look a little bit cruel because I just will need to stimulate him a little bit to really, you know, to really see what he's able to do. I mean, if you don't want to see it, maybe excuse me five minutes. <laughs> it's just, uh, I just, you know, go and poke him a little bit deliberately so that I, I can see how far he wakes up. Is that all right? Uh. William? William? Yeah. All right. How are you? Yeah. All right? Yeah. Okay. Any headache at all? No headache? No. no. William, I, I was told you don't know where you are. Do you know where you are at the moment? Yeah. Where's that? Yeah. What's that? Tuesday. What day is it today? It's Tuesday. No, not quite. Which year? What year are we in? Oh, 2006. Alright. Really, I'm so sorry. 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 i you can't remember because you've got concussion. That's why you can't remember. You won't remember saying a day or When you hit your head and you get concussion, you don't usually remember the accident at all. That's that's why. No, that's why. Don't worry about it. You you will do. Stupid. But taller a weekend up now, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Do you want to stop him from climbing up any more ladders? No, um, I, I wouldn't do that. But I'll make sure that I'm there, holding the ladder while he goes up it. Because he's the one and that's it. Did they cut your trousers? Yeah, they cut the clothes off. You've lost your... Well working trousers. Yeah, you've, lost, you've cut your working <laughs> trousers off you. Yeah, that's them onto your list for Christmas. Quite <laughs> <laughs> my jaw Yeah. Yeah. Side of your face. Oh, not half you didn't. Eh? Hey? What this side? Yeah, you've, what you've got oh. is your cheek. It's like. It's a wonder you didn't break your cheekbone, I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been married for? Uh, 60 years this year. We've got one problem now. And none of us want to die first. <laughs> Leave the other one behind. <laughs> What's that 40, 80 one and that? That's uh, measuring probably his um, heart rate. Doing all right, is it? Yeah. I try and keep off that subject because I don't like that subject. <laughs> I don't even think about it. He's going back to a normal colour in his face now. You can't go yet anyway. I want, a, I want a, an anniversary card off the Queen for 60 years, be married to you. So you can't go yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the summer comes and we get out in the garden, we'll probably still be getting up trees and cutting the branches off. And probably get a lot of, uh, shouldn't be doing that, but. Where do you draw the line? Why do you suddenly say, I'm too old to do that?
Applicator. Yeah, yeah. Please have Ready, steady, and down. Beautiful. Right, I'm now going to clean his face up while we've got a little window. Three hours after Malcolm should have finished for the day, he finally hands over his patient, Theodore. So, this is 33-year-old Theodorus. He's a Greek national who's a student at LSE. He was crossing the road at Elephant and Castle and he was hit by a double-decker bus, not sure what speed. But at scene, he was found to be bent double under the front of the bus. His head was touching his toes. He was conscious and extricated. Yeah, quite often you go home on a, after work and you think of a patient, have I done the right thing? Have I done? And sometimes I'll go home and I'll ring someone who's at work and say, look, I don't think I've done the right thing here. Can you just check something for me or can you do this test for me? Or can you just check something out for me? And quite you know, more often than not, I said, no, no, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry, but it's just that thought that comes into your head. Have I missed something? Have I missed something? God. Good, really good job done by everyone here. He was in CT in 10 minutes. Katie. Superb. Oh, no, no, but I've got that one. Superb. Superb. What? Superb. What? Brilliant. What? Yeah, good. Good. Um, we're not going to x-ray, we're doing them here. Brilliant. We'll change their minds. Thank you. Can you, can you tell his educational supervisor and anaesthetic server? Good job. Did you know today is the 25th birthday, official birthday of Haribo? No, I'll tell my wife. She likes Haribo sweets. Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of um, a jack of all trades, really, aren't we? We know a bit about everything. You know, it's the, the, the first bit when you come in the door, what needs doing then, and then after that, we pass it on, we pass the rest of the care on to somebody else. We never complete the care, you know, so getting them out of A&E alive is only, it's only a small part of it. That's, that's the best bit. Obviously, that is no guarantee that they're still gonna live. You care, and you've got to show you care. And, it, and if you didn't care about what you were doing, well, what's the point in doing it? I don't think that fear ever goes. I don't think that fear goes from when you, your first day as a doctor to your last day as a doctor. I remember that uh, I asked the doctor stupidly, actually, uh, does he going to walk again? With He looked at me and said that at this moment, we're fighting for his life. It's not that important if he's going to walk again or not. And then I realized that this is a very serious situation. It's now nine hours since William hit his head coming off his bike. I, I haven't seen a concussion that good since my brother came off his bike. Can you wake up, Will? Will, can you wake up for me? <coughs> concussion can leave you quite confused. Your frontal lobe hitting the front of your skull and that's where all your personality is and your behaviours come from. Your inhibitions are all in the frontal lobes. Hey, Will. How you doing? Good. Where are you at the moment? I'm on the side. OK. What day is it? Um, good. It's not a good day. You squeeze my finger for me? Good. That's a bit better, isn't it? <laughs> all right, mate. Lie down. That's all right. Have a bit of a kip, yeah? Yeah, it is. It's all right. Just because I didn't see very well, so I can sleep this well in the Oh, you, you sleep as long as you want, all right, if you didn't sleep very well. Oh, I'm actually asleep. Are you actually asleep? Well, you're actually in the hospital, sweetheart. Both him and his wife were such genuine, lovely people, and it was an accident that came completely out of the blue, which is 
shocking for everybody who's involved, you know, and I think at, when it's like that, I feel that you have... I have to step up to the mark and do my best for the patient and the relatives at the time, because it is, it, it's scary. Your face is a bit bashed up, yeah. So it's only was I let me run upstairs. Was... Don't worry about running upstairs, darling. And do you know what year it is, Will? Can you tell me what year we're in? 2007. 2007, well, we're getting up there, we're getting there. People that have head injuries, they've had brain shakes. So their brain doesn't work the way it should do. Do you know what I mean? That doesn't mean that there's something horrendous going on there. It just means that they've had a good shake of their brain and it's just, they just need to go to sleep and recover. But unfortunately, we have to keep waking them up to try and assess what their conscious level is when they are awake. Will? Hello? What's happened to you today? Will, hello? Can you tell me where we are? Well, stay awake. You're in King's College Hospital. You're in the hospital. What do you think my job is? What do you think I do? Well, I'll tell you. It's to get things ready. Yeah? OK. It's important to me how I treat people, how I behave. The fact that I can't remember is a concern is a weird experience, just not remembering for quite a reasonable period of time, um, uh, you know, a part of your life which is a very sort of dramatic and important part of your life. OK, but once the swelling settles down, you should definitely go back to normal appearance. So the swelling will left, your face will look the same as it was before. You know, big changes. What we need to do is just also be careful with every time you sneeze or you have to blow your nose, you probably have to sneeze by keep, keeping your mouth open, OK? To relieve pressure on your, on your eye. Otherwise, if you sneeze or blow your nose quite heavily, you will definitely have, you know, a big puffy eye. Okay. He's not going to remember that. He's not going to remember that. No, he's not into, um, processing the information correctly. Sure you're not. What did, okay. what did the doctor just say? The doctor. That doctor? This one here. Yeah, what did he just say? Um, he just said I'm saying it some um, King's Cross. And the... Right, so, really. Otherwise, Come back tomorrow. Something going on there, love. And it's really sore and it's lumpy. Oh, you're gonna dig that in? Mm. What? What? You said there is something in there, isn't there? Have you not got any gardening gloves? Ow! Sorry. <laughs> I thought he was out! Do you remember that time I asked you to do bloods at half past nine? You said don't start till <laughs> ten o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that it? That is it. Is there more? See that massive, massive, huge <laughs> splinter? <laughs> that, I reckon you're going to have to take a bit of time off work. I need a thumbectomy. Jeez. <laughs> 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 yes. Well, I knew I was right, seeing my senses. It's washed. I washed it. You knew you were right. You said you got bitten by an insect. Well, I said it's there a was a splinter. I, I said I was either bitten or there was one a splinter. one of those. Wound care. <laughs> <laughs> you stop taking the mickey. First splinter, it was like enormous. It was like, but it was like a match. It, see, it kept me awake because every time I'm, I, I move my hand I'm not and I hurt. <laughs> the smallest splinter I've ever seen in my life. Even my son having that in his little toe wouldn't have made. Listen, but it's just that my pain. I'm quite sensitive. That's all. How do you actually do it so it goes? <laughs> you nearly had my eye out. Don't. Oh, I see. Back, book her in again. I think with injuries and illness, things like that, we're not very sympathetic, especially if you work in A&E. Look, she don't care. She just walks on off. 
I remember my little boy, when he was four, three, I took him to school, nursery, limping for three days when he said his foot hurt. And I was like, you're OK. You know, eventually I took him to A&E, his foot was broken. I took him to school for three days. Yeah, Gemma, so this boy comes in yesterday. Yeah. Greek guy, student at LSE, crossing the road at Elephant Castle, hit by a bus. Folded at his waist of a Gareth Davis from Heaven, so his, his head was touching his toes. Like conscious. The fork broke on your bike. Do you remember me telling you that? Oh, yeah, so am I going to survive okay? Yeah. You just have a little problem with your memory at the moment because you have a concussion. Because you hit your head. Oh, that's bad luck, isn't it? it is bad luck, yeah. All patients are vulnerable to an extent. William, I'm just going to shine a light in your eye, OK? So I'm just going to shine the light. No, OK. You look at my... Can you just look at my forehead? No, don't cover your eyes with her, because I need to shine the light in there. OK, here we go. In terms of their care, it is in our hands, and it's in our hands to make sure that it's no. done efficiently no. and that people get what they deserve. I should take a bit of a knock on that one. Yeah, have, yeah. I think when you're a nurse and a doctor that you have to realise your responsibility to a patient and the day you lose that is the day you need to reassess your motives and what you're doing. Because it doesn't matter what walk of life somebody comes from, there is a time when we all need somebody to stand up for us. So am I going to... Um, well, we're going to keep you in. OK? Yes, you will. Will I recover? As my breakfast or...? Recover as your breakfast. Does that make sense? Um, let's just get this right. Do you know where you are? What's this place? <laughs> Didn't I tell you where you were? You were... I was absolutely fine. Mm. And I must have had a fall. You did. But where did I tell you you were? I told you you were at King's College Hospital. Oh, yeah. So where are you? King's College Hospital. That's right. So I'm going to ask you now in a few minutes again, and we'll see if you still remember that, OK? I wasn't in a position to make a decision or probably even conscious or who knows what at the time, so I'm really glad that there was someone who was really connecting to my situation and really making sure that everything was done possible to, for, for my well-being, which, for me, I, I'm really moved by, and I think that really is fantastic, and I'd, I'd like to thank that lady. William? Yeah. Where are you? Where am I? Yeah. What's this place? In the hospital. Right. Good. Which hospital? I think it's Tommy's hospital. Very good. We're getting there. Smashed pelvis. Smashed. I'll show you the picture. Yeah. He's been, he was found by hems folded in half. Wow. So, I mean, he's almost he's detached the right hemi pelvis from his sacrum, hasn't he? Wow. I don't know how they'll put that together at all. It's a little bit wild to, to owe your life to someone you don't know who he is. I don't remember nothing from that day. How long after the accident was it when you were awake and you could understand? Well, my accident happened on the 19th of November. And I remember having, you know, my first thoughts uh, in the middle of December, you know, a whole month is, uh, was missing for me. I think that in doctors, I own my life. They saved my life. Somebody upstairs loves you, Theodore. Yes, I, I meet him. <laughs> I went and I come back. So yes, someone is upstairs and he's very kind to, uh, with me was very kind with me. And it still is. Hello. Hello. Right. Yeah, not too bad. After yesterday, our trauma, trauma, trauma. Uh, yeah. That guy, I thought he was going to die. But he's always doing all right, actually. Is he? Yeah, I've been seeing him on surgical critical care. He's still intubated. Got a pelvic X fix on. Um, but doing OK, actually. Saved him. Oh, I thought, I, so you don't often think you made a difference. I thought. I think we did. I think we, I think we all did yesterday. <laughs> he 
You love it, don't you? Yeah. I do. I don't, I don't deny it. I don't... I, I, why should I deny it? It's, it's, it's extremely satisfying. It's extremely satisfying. But then it's my job. That's what I'm trained to do. I'm such a moron. I'll, I'll try my best to sort of just bring it together and close it up. And... Ah! They think that we can just put them back together brand new, that we've got spare parts in the drawer. When they pop your eye out and it's hanging down, yeah? Oh, that's what they do, do, seriously. It's 31 years old and a motorcyclist. He complains more pain in the right testicle than the left testicle. It looked look like a purple carrot. I can tell you that much.